Hello and welcome back. Okay, so um, working back on the uh, Heathkit scope. Um, in the last video, we we fired it up and it wasn't working. So I've um, I've been doing some work off camera. Um, didn't take me long to find the problem actually. Um, all I had to do was uh, spend some time measuring the voltages on the CRT socket here. Uh, went through everything, found that there there wasn't correct voltage there. Once I traced it back, I found a problem with this section here. And what I'd done, this 470k resistor, I connected it between lug 3 and lug 2, instead of lug 3 and lug 1. So I've since replaced that, and um, I'm getting all the voltages that I need. So now we can go through the correct startup procedure um, and go through testing. Okay, so with the scope connected to my light bulb limiter, I can um, we can power it on and go through the, the startup procedure. So turn the brilliance control fully clockwise, and we should see what happens. Sorry about the glare. You see that spot? Just there. Okay, we take both the horizontal and vertical position. And there's our spot, look. Woo! Okay. We take the horizontal position control. Notice that the spot moves are horizontally across the screen and the vertical position does the same. Now you can see it's off kilter at the moment but um, we can adjust that in a minute. Now adjust the focus to get the smallest spot possible. I don't know if you can see that, maybe it's come from this angle. You can see I'm turning this, as I turn the control the spot gets smaller or bigger, smallest spot possible. There. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. with the spot centered, slowly turn. Let's get that centered. Might not look centered on camera, but it is. It is on screen. Slowly turn the horizontal gain. Clockwise, the spot should now become a line. There we go. Woo! Don't again. Don't worry that it's off axis. Okay, so connect a test lead between the vertical input red socket and the socket marked 1 volt P to P. Right. Test lead. Uh, so, 1 volt P to P. Test socket. What I'm actually going to do to help stop the glare, I'm just going to rotate this around. Um, and then we can see things better this way. There we go. So with the test lead connected there, the instructions say adjust the vertical gain control for a trace height of about two centimeters. There we go. Okay, move the horizontal frequency selector switch, this one, to this position here. And we can see um, and slowly advance the horizontal gain control. The vertical line should begin to slope to the left. Oh there we go, so there's a vertical line and you can sweep it to the left. Hmm. Okay, turn the horizontal gain control fully anti-clockwise and move the horizontal frequency selector to position number one. Position number one. Advance the horizontal gain until the pattern reaches a width of about four centimeters. Each of these squares is a centimeter, so that's four. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Now adjust the fine frequency control 
until you obtain a pattern similar to that shown in figure one. There's figure one. Okay, so find frequency control. There we go, look at that. Again, don't worry that it's off kilter. Okay, uh, let's try and get this straight. Sorry, the dog's barking in the background. Right, okay, so. Now, yes, yeah, so we've got that figure, that pattern is shown in figure one. The pattern will flicker because of the low sweep rate, so that flickering is fine. The next three positions on the sector should produce varied patterns. Okay? Depending on the frequency, frequency relationships between the uh, 50 hertz voltage applied to the vertical input and the time based generator frequency. Okay, so. Can we make that do something? It's only doing something, isn't it? Position three. And finally, position four. It just seems to move it, doesn't it? Okay, right. Turn off the oscilloscope and put it back together. Right, so that's the initial startup procedure. Everything seems to be working. Now what we're gonna do is using my signal generator up there is in inject a one kilohertz, 150 millivolt signal. Um, but I use for testing guitar amps and we shall see what it looks like on the scope. I'm also gonna put it back in the case um, and up on the bench. Okay, so with the scope on the bench up with the rest of the test equipment, you can see I managed to get the, the line almost perfectly straight. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, just connect up the, uh, the signal generator. So. There we go. Red lead to the uh, vertical input. Ground lead to the black there. And then we have... So I can turn on the scope, turn on the signal generator, sorry. This line here means 150 millivolts, one kilohertz, and we've got something on the screen. So let's see if we can find our signal. And there it is. So that's uh, horizontal gain to move in, vertical gain to enlarge it slightly, Find frequency control. I think that pot is quite dirty actually. And there we go. And there is our one kilohertz cycle, one kilohertz sine wave. If I adjust the frequency of it with this, we're going to go down. I think we've got a dirty pot. I think this pot is dirty and needs cleaning. Yep. Yeah. Well, you can decrease the frequency or increase it. Oh, didn't like that. But there we go, one working scope, almost. Just need to clean that pot up. Seems if I tap it, it stops. Now what we can do with this is, if we put it in this mode, it applies a 50 hertz signal. And we can start to measure phase, phase relationships between Our input signal. So if I now change the frequency of this, we can ch change the shapes on the screen. What can we find then? There you go. There you go, on working scope. So, all in all, seems to be okay. Quite happy with that. It's perfect for what I intend to use it for, which is measuring uh, the output of a guitar amplifier when connected to a dummy load. Um, and for some easy diagnostic work as well, you know, tracing a signal through a circuit and stuff like that. But um, 
Perfect. Right. Thank you very much for watching. Any questions, um, please put them in the comments down below.